Once a colony, the United States is today a global superpower, and behind its unmatched level of growth and success mostly stands its geography. Between Canada and Mexico, two friendly countries that do not pose as threats militarily speaking, and between the Pacific Ocean to the west and the Atlantic Ocean to the east, the US sits in the safest location on the planet, position that no other country benefits of. The oceans about which historian Thomas Bailey said they're America's liquid assets, besides being a source of food and a gateway to international trade, also act as thick walls that protect the country from any exterior threats. The fact that they are huge makes a hypothetical invasion extremely hard to pull, if not even impossible, because an invasion across the oceans, not only that it would require heavy supply chains, it would also lose its surprise element and therefore its power. And perhaps the clearest example that highlights the effect that America's special position on the globe has had on the country's development is Europe, or better said, the old world, which throughout its history has been shredded in armed conflicts and rebuilt countless times. There have been armed conflicts in the US also, but these fights took place at a time when the country was young and weak. Once things settled, the US took advantage of the most secure location in the world and focused on development on all levels. Still, the influence and weight of the United States on the global scene didn't result from just the fact that the country is thousands of miles away from everyone else. Both Mexico and Canada are basically in the same situation, but once again, geography made the difference. In Canada, the cold climate has always limited the practice of agriculture and the difficult terrain along with the lack of inland waterways to facilitate the transport of goods, food and the movement of people have only slowed down the country's pace of development. And things weren't that good in Mexico either, which also had to face a slow pace of development because agriculture was practiced with difficulty since most of the country was a desert and just like Canada, Mexico also lacked a network or at least a navigable river to ease transport and access to the center of the country. But for the US, the advantage of being insulated between two oceans was easily exploited to the max because its coastline has deep natural harbors, some of them being at the mouths of navigable rivers, rivers that go deep into the country, connecting it with the rest of the world. And historically and strategically speaking, New Orleans is one of the most important harbor cities in the US because it sits at the mouth of the most important drainage basin in the states, the Greater Mississippi River Basin. Having a vast network of navigable rivers, the Mississippi Basin offered that efficient mean of transport of goods, mail and people for almost half of the American territory which, not being isolated from the rest of the world, thrived. In a way we can consider this basin that covers 40% of the US's mainland a liquid, interconnected natural highway system that was vital for the country in a period when there were no railways or roads. To understand the absolutely essential role that the basin has had in the evolution of the American Midwest, for companies based in Cincinnati, Ohio, rather than sending their merchandise by land to the East Coast, it was cheaper and therefore more feasible to have the merchandise shipped on a route 10 times longer via the Ohio River, then the Mississippi and then by sea from New Orleans all the way to Philadelphia or New York. This is how well this immense drainage system worked for the young America. And the vast river system that the US has, has been playing a much deeper role than just being vital to trade both domestic and foreign, as it is also a fundamental resource for another absolutely necessary aspect regarding the country's growth, which is the ability to feed its population efficiently. You see, lands crossed by rivers are really good for growing crops because rivers carry clays and finer silts, which once deposited, increase the level of organic matter in the soils, thus making them fertile. And America has a lot of land that is amazing for agriculture. Without Alaska, continental US has an area of 7.6 million square kilometers and almost half of it is used for growing crops and livestock grazing. In the same time, besides having fertile and well irrigated land, the US also has a good climate for agriculture. So the country is blessed with everything it needs for the growing season to be long and plentiful. And when a country has so much land that is ideal for agriculture, we can say that size works in its favor. You see, in geography size matters, but just as it can be an advantage, it can also be a natural restraint. And to see how and why, let's take a quick look at Australia, which is about the same size as the United States. Although Australia is huge, its geography offers the proper conditions for human settlements to function and thrive on just a small fraction of the country's landmass. The northern part is way too hot, most of the country is an arid desert, and the only drainage system in Australia that is formed of navigable rivers, the Murray-Darling Basin, covers only about 14% of the total landmass and on top of this, the basin doesn't have the flow, depth and reliability of the Mississippi Basin. So in Australia's case, size didn't help that much. 
In fact, the incredibly long distances between the major population poles which are spread along the coasts are a major drawback on both short and long run. Of course, the US as you know it wouldn't have made it this far without the crucial and wise decisions taken by the right people at the right time. The decision to advance to the western part of the continent made the US geographically speaking the right place, because having all of these incredible resources under the same roof gave the country its much needed boost and leverage. The rest is history.